Hello everybody, ciao a tutti and welcome to Art with Miss V. We finally arrived at the fourth and last practice uh, about the Talaveras traditional Mexican tiles and I'm very very happy and I'm very excited to be here today. Now if you're new, new to this channel first of all welcome. You can start from this video and then practice with my other three videos about Talaveras traditional Mexican tiles if you wish to do so and I encourage you to peruse around my video. I publish so many beautiful colorful design of black and white and tangle and videos and practice about specific elements of art and design and specific technique. For today's practice I'm going to use my mix and media journal. If you don't have a journal, which I encourage you to buy in, in the future, you can practice on a good quality of mix and media paper. If you have a big pad, 9 per uh, 12, 8 by 11, you can uh, cut the page, divide pages in half so you can prepare smaller uh, paper for you so you don't have to do a huge design. Uh, I have a very few rules, you now, you know, my subscriber know that, but if you're new, I always, you know, repeat and explain again. One is really that you need to finish what you start. It's really important. This is what I teach to all of my students and this is what I personally do on myself because I cannot teach something if I'm not doing it. So I do it and doing it for my own practice and I teach my students as well. So don't do something big, do something small that you feel that you can commit and then you build up from there, right? If you feel that you want to commit to something bigger, more sophisticated, more complicated, you will build on that first practice. But it's really good to have your journal or all the practice together in a folder so you kind of become more comfortable and familiar with different techniques, with different elements of art, with different media. Today I'm going to use, in fact, the traditional watercolors, so you have to use the traditional watercolors, any brand and any palette that you have available, a very small and a small, so get a couple of brushes, small and very small, because the design are not very big and they're kind of busy and they have some like sections and area that are kind of small to feel. So you need a cup for the water, a pencil for drawing, an eraser. In case you don't have the watercolors or in case that you don't feel that your fine model skills are already prepared to fill small spaces and complicated design with watercolor and traditional brush, you can use the brush markers. Brush markers that they are a media on their own and you can create beautiful art with them. You can blend them and mix them and they can give you that there exercise that practice that your hand need in order to switch and feel very comfortable then with traditional brush and traditional watercolor so if you want to start with brush marker do so if you are a lover of coloring pencils and coloring pencils is really your thing it's what makes you happy and you're doing this video just because you like the content that i propose and the message that i sent and the way that i uh, support you step by step, use the coloring pencil instead. You can mix and blend and create some value. So your coloring process probably will take a little longer than mine. But as I always say, my videos are here for you to support you. You can divide them in two. For example, you don't have to do the whole practice all together. If you have time and if you want to do so, and if you wish to do so, you will post the video after instructions, prep your material and then practice along with me. Or you can just watch the video and then practice at your own convenience, maybe even outside in a park or whatever. Or you can divide the videos in two parts or three parts. So you dedicate 15, 20 minutes, two times or so three times per week. You need to do what is best for you. So you kind of eliminate all of the excuses that keep you from practicing art. The practice of art just for reviewing what we are doing here, not only we are learning about something that maybe you didn't know about or something that we don't usually have exposure to, right? Like Mexican tile, art from Mexico, from other country or whatever. It's also a very good uh, opportunity to practice your fine motor skills, your coordination skills, brain, hand, to become more fluent and comfortable with some artistic media, such as watercolor, Sometimes it could be markers, sometimes it could be uh, a mixed, sometimes it could be oil pastels, coloring pencil, and etc. Also, it's an important opportunity to dedicate some time to your own uh, mental health, mental focus, and relaxation. You have these 20 minutes or you have these 45 minutes, so depending on if you do it 
in one session or in multiple sessions where you kind of just dedicate time to yourself. And that is very, very valuable. Now I'm going to switch the camera so I can guide you step by step and I will keep explaining some things I do in the practice. Okay, this is my usual journal. Uh, if you see some light, very light lines, it's just because I started the design and then I erase it. But because I was recording, I pressed too much with the pencil and so you can see, but I don't want to waste this page because this is a very good mix and media art journal and they cost a lot of money. So I'm going to reframe it and I'm going to do our new design on top of it. So just don't get confused. I'm going to start with the pencil and I'm going to reframe my space because I want something, as I told you, that is not too big and it doesn't overwhelm me and it allows me to do a beautiful, nice practice in a decent amount of time. I'm doing it free hands. If you feel that your hands are a little shaky, your fine model skills are still not there, you can use a ruler to have a perfect square. You can definitely, then you can measure the half and a half, so you know the center if you want something more geometric. But the nature of Talaveras Mexicana, traditional Mexican tile, is that they are entirely handmade and entirely hand painted. So I'm gonna kind of very like quickly define more or less the center that is once again, not geometrically accurate because I'm doing free hands respecting the Mexican traditions. Then if you wanna do it with a ruler, go ahead and do it with a ruler. I'm gonna trace a circle. And once again, I do my best, I do my best to have a nice circle, but it doesn't have to be, and it will never be a perfect geometric circle because I'm not using any tools. And as I was saying, something that is handmade and hand painted comes with uh, its own little imperfections that make each tile very unique. Now I'm going to go around with another circle. You can focus on the first line and try to go parallel to it. And now I'm going to kind of trace a very light lines because I don't want them to show after we paint. One, two, like across three and four. So I know where I'm going with my decoration. Now I'm gonna start to design some type of abstract leaves. Pretend that you're doing drops in a diagonal direction. So we're gonna do one, on one side of these lines, one on the other side. We're gonna do one big that goes all the way up and back down. And we're gonna just fill this space with other do two drops so that at the point we know exactly the size that we need to. We're gonna do the same on these other three lines. So we go one diagonal drop, one diagonal drop, one long big central drop, and then we fulfill the gap. One side and the other side. And let's do this again. One. And you see, they look very well crafted, with like nice and symmetric, but still, they are not all the same. And this is what makes the Talavera so nice and original and so beautiful. I also love, because that is my personal style and personal connection with art. So if yours is different, embrace it. You don't have to copy me. You don't have to copy anybody. This is just like an idea. You can make your change along the way as much as you want and as much as you wish. Now we're going to put something like one single drop in these four gaps. Starting from our circle, we go with one, go with two, go with three, and go with four. Now we are going to take care of these four corner, like in a traditional tiles, we have the main design. We want to put something over here to fulfill the space, otherwise the design will look unbalanced, right? So we are also learning how to use a space that we have available properly. Not too much, not too little, but create something nice. We're going to keep this um, motif of leaves or drops, whatever you want to call them. So we're going to do one big in each corner, coming down to the center. And 
And now, as you see, I'm pressing a, a little too much with the pencil just because I want to make sure that you can see the design properly. If you're doing it on your own, you don't need to press so much. Actually, the lighter is the pencil outlines, the better is for you to change it, to correct it, and you don't even have to erase it before painting. Now we're going to fulfill the two sides. So we're going to do sides one and two. Same. Nice and simple. See something so simple and repeating the same simple uh, details can make and can create a beautiful design. Now we are going to uh, fill a little bit this empty space, but not too much. So I say that I would put one circle and one circle. So keep as a reference the two corner at the central drops and you will feel like you will put them side by side, side and side, side and side like that. Once again, if you have something small and circular, you can use it to trace a better circle if you feel that you don't have the fine model skills to draw uh, decent circles. Otherwise, so just do it slowly. You point your pencil, you take a deep breath, you focus, and you turn. And here we are. And I think that I'm going to do a smaller circle inside because I want to create a connection between this big design and some of the elements in the rest of the design. So I, and also because every time that I do so, I get more opportunity to cover. Also now with my eraser, I'm gonna erase the lines that I trace to have a sort of a directions and support to create the design that I decided to create around the first the, the circle. If you have some lines that bothers you, I suggest you to erase it, clean up your space nice and prepare your station for the painting. And I think that I want to do also inside this four a smaller drop, just because it will give me the opportunity to use a couple of colors inside those drops and to make them a little different from this one, okay? And probably I would do the same here for one, two, three, and four. Now it's all done and balanced. I see that we have some background, but we have a nice design. I'm gonna start to paint using a small brush and my traditional watercolors. If you don't have the same color that I do have, it's totally fine. You do you. You can mix a different colors. You can do multiple things just like you will do you. Now I'm going to start. I will use blue and turquoise and light green and dark green and orange. I will use a mix of um, cold, sorry, cold and warm color. You can do something like mine, or you can use an only cold palette or an only uh, warm palette as you wish. What it is important is that if you're using traditional watercolors, I, you're probably you're already noticing, I'm using just the right amount of water on my brush to have the colors ready but I don't want it to have it too watery, right? Because we don't want the color to blend and bleed out. In this case, we really want to have the very good control, which we know that with watercolor is never 100% control, right? There is always that element of surprise, which I love so much, but we also learn how to control the amount of water, how to control the brush and so on, on and on. What I like about it is that you will have a more saturation and less saturation because I didn't dip the brush again. I just used what I have and this is what makes the tiles even more original, even better and prettier. Now I'm going to completely rinse my brush and switch it to a nice, intense, dark orange, cherry red. And... I'm going to paint the circle outside, creating a boom, a very like a strong contrast, like a Talaveras Mexicana. Mexican Talaveras are 
In Mexican art in general, it's characterized by the use of these bold color palettes that go and navigate from warm to cold with beautiful color patterns and this really high visual contrast that it's so attractive, at least to me. I just love it. Now with the same little orange, nice and bright, I'm gonna see where else. And I think that I will mimic the central, I will do the same over here to create a nice co like connection between the two designs. Go slow and take your time. Is there, either, there is a little bleeding or overlapping. Uh, embrace it. Uh, that is going to make your uh, design, your tile, paper tile, very unique. So there is no panic, uh, no rejection. Oh my, I need to start over. No, we don't do that. You're going to complete and finish what you started. You're going to let it dry. If you need to fix uh, something, uh, you're going to be able to go over and fix it. And with the black... Uh, outlines that we're going to do at the end you have another tool in your hand to fix a little bit the design in case you need and to make it like a more precise so do not throw it away do not start over embrace what you have and even if at the end the result is not as the one that you picture in your mind it will still like the experience was still was worth it because you have to focus on the process. During the process, you have been learning something new, something different. You did something that you have never done before, maybe, right? So these are all extremely valuable factors. They are connected and related to every art practice. Remember that we are facing this as an experimentation, as a practice in which we see what happens and we take a mental or even physical notes. If you want to write some notes on the back of your design in your journal, I do it all the time with my students and I encourage you to do reflections after we do something is still part of the process and is extremely important because it's when we take a moment to observe what we did, to feel extremely excited and good about it, or a little like disappointed because life sometimes happens, right? An accident happens. And so we take notes and we say, okay, this is what I did. This is what it went really nice and well. This is what I would do completely different. Or you can try again the same design and maybe change the media that you're using. So instead to use the watercolor, you can do pencil or you can do markers, depending on what you've used before for your first practice. Or you can keep the same design and the same media, maybe change the color palette and see which is the color palette that uh, represent you the most and that speaks to you the most because we always have to create something that speaks to us the first of all forgetting completely about other people's judgment other people feeling towards art is so individual and so intimate anyway now let's go and have some fun with some green I'm gonna find a kind of, a, I like a deep a turquoise green. If you do not have it, just mix some blue with your darkest green. And then you will have the color that you want. I think that I'm gonna do the outside of this. So we're gonna go nice and slow. My brush was a little too wet, so I need to really, really, really be careful. As you notice, and maybe you didn't, so I'm going to tell you, the secret is also that we want to really barely touch the paper. Our touch should be extremely gentle. No pressure at all. As soon as the brush touches the paper, it's going to release the color, so there is no need to add any pressure with our hands. And I know that for some people it will be very natural because maybe you have been practicing already a lot or you are a natural, is your natural talent. For some people it might be a challenge. Please embrace the challenge with an open mind and an open heart. 
And if the things look messy at the beginning, once again, these are practices for yourself in your journal. This is a judgment-free zone. And it's something that it's so important. You should feel proud of yourself because you showed up, you did the practice, you're embracing your challenge and maybe your failures and you're going to do something different another time. I also encourage you to, um, this time maybe I will do the inside to create a sort of a correlation, but we mix things up. I encourage you to also, after you subscribe to my channel, to just ask to request, like uh, send me a request to uh, join our Facebook group, Art with Miss B, just because it's so beautiful. You don't have to share what you created. It's something absolutely non mandatory, but you will see what other people are creating uh, through the same tutorial. So it's so uh, impressive and interesting to see how the same tutorials can really give so many different interpretation and uh, uh, products. It's really inspiring and is a beautiful, respectful, very safe uh, and comfortable page and group uh, when we can share things uh, that we have been creating together. Now I'm going to switch to a different green and this time I would like for it to be pretty light, uh, completely contrasting uh, the dark green. And I will uh, use it for the inside of these drops or leaves and the outside of these and probably for a couple of leaves also here because we need to start the building. And I just touched uh, a little bit of orange. Now probably I will have to use some kind of uh, warm color to cover that. You see, things happen. Very carefully, just make sure that the uh, the dark green or whatever color you use for the outside of this leaf is pretty much dry. Make sure that your brush is not too wet so you can barely like you touch the surface and your color doesn't bleed. I like to do sort of outlines of my of the areas that I need to paint kind of helps me to stay inside the outlines a little bit of more water just there just enough to create some moisture again. Gonna use the same nice bright green. And maybe I'm gonna do the two leaves in between because now it's because I got a little accident with the orange. I'm gonna fulfill these two bottle line maybe with the red or with a uh, hot pink something that can easily cover and blend with that little orange. And I'm afraid that if I do the green or something, I'm gonna have a brownish spot which I don't want actually I want to really avoid the earth tones and neutral tones for this practice just because they are not uh, characteristic of the uh, Talaveras so I'm using a very bright and intense color palette so I'm gonna reserve this green for the leaves in between more just a 
see the little bottle. Now, rinse the brush. Let's think about this. I would like maybe a pretty dark red. So what I would do, I would actually mix a, a green with the red. So I'm gonna spoil the red to make it look more uh, maroon, burgundy. I'm gonna use just the right amount of water and then I'm gonna, there you go, beautiful, very dark. This will cover up the orange. It's a little too much water on my brush, so I need to really proceed carefully. The action of feeling this design, it's so like uh, good to my brain and hopefully to your brain as well. I feel that I am totally present to the experience because I need to stay focused right to accomplish what I want. And I need to take care, you know, be really careful, slow, intentional and consistent in my focus also so it's so therapeutic huh? a little bit of more water on my brush that was getting a little bit too dry still and I want it a little darker You can go over in moderation because remember that we are using a mix and media paper, which is extremely nice because it can hold the wet media, but of course it doesn't have the same texture that watercolor paper has. So it's gonna give this beautiful different texture, almost like a, I don't know, a stained glass or something like that. Now we need to make a decision for this part and probably I will go with the blue but a little different blue so I'm gonna mix it with a little bit of violet to make something different from the blue that we use in the center let's see what happens nice have fun mix your colors If you don't really like a color, you can let it dry and uh, then maybe go over once it's completely dry. With another color, if you don't like it, you know, the first. Okay, let me see if I can take a little bit more of this violet and mix it in here. And one last drop. Intensify it a little bit. Go over this one. I really like this blue. I think that I'm going to use it also for the other two uh, leaves in the corner.
what I like about the watercolor. You see like all the brush strokes uh, that you can still see and they give us another implied texture. And since, you know, we're not using real ceramic, we're not doing the real things, we're just getting inspired by the design, I feel that it's something that can resemble a little bit painting uh, on a ceramic with glaze. So I like that. Um, this implied texture that the watercolors are giving me and the fact that we can see the brush strokes exactly as you would see on the original Mexican Talaveras. Um, last two. Oopsie, I need a little bit more water. So when you feel that the brush is getting too dry, just dip it quickly and gently in the water, just because you want something smooth, right? You should not have in trouble like uh, painting the paper. You sh it should be something nice and smooth. And as soon as you touch the paper, the color will release, okay? Now we're gonna think about something for the background. And it could be something neutral, something warmer or something colder. You know that I'm obsessed with the light aqua color, so, this is probably what I would use, but feel free to use your favorite, to use something completely different. Um, have fun with it. This case, we want just a, a little bit more water, just because the surface that we have to feel is a little bigger. And we want to have the opportunity to move comfortably and smoothly our brush around in case the background colors leads a little bit into the design once again it's not a big deal it's part of your unique product and it will make this product original and different from every other design that we are all making using the same tutorial and maybe even the same media so your artworks and your practices are unique and this is what they're meant to be we don't want to copy, we don't want like a hundreds of the same design and copy because there is not really value in that. Except for, you know, training your fine model skills and your technique with the media, but we can do it differently. We can do that while we also take care of our personality <laughs> and we respect it and we have fun and we embrace it because we feel more connected when we do something that we can relate to and we can personalize and we can you know connect to it much better Yeah, that's definitely my favorite color, you know. Every time that I see it, it makes me happy. And if you're one of those people who don't know what are the colors and what's your favorite color, like a color that makes you feel happy, that makes you feel you, that really initiates something inside yourself, these are perfect, perfect practices for you and perfect opportunity to figure that out. and to experiment in matching colors that you never matched before and see how those colors interact, see how those colors make you feel. See 
see which colors work really well together and they support and enhance each other and which colors instead kind of struggle together they don't really like each other I'm gonna go careful around the main design then we're gonna retouch the background gently once it's kind of a little drier I'm proceeding with a small brush just because I don't want to change the brush but also because we have to go in a small spaces a small area so I rather take a little longer time but use a small brush that just rush it with a bigger brush but then kind of mess up the the whole design so this process might be a little tedious but still part of the process and it's gonna make our beautiful, beautiful tile. All done at the end. That's probably my least favorite part of this practice, but we embrace it, we commit to it, and we do it until the end. Go over the parts that are already dry so you can kind of smooth the colors and the brush strokes a little more. Little by little we're getting close, a little too much water so I'm gonna be careful and use it first in this area which is a little less risky than the other one and easier to feel my turquoise went a little over the orange and in that case i'm not gonna retouch it and i'm not gonna adjust it because it's exactly what i wanted like you know i love that little overlapping which is exactly what happens in hand painted tiles mostly when they feature very you know pretty busy design as much as you're fluent with your brush you know they paint these tiles so quickly and they just very they are very spontaneous in the act of painting those and so of course you might have a little overlapping which is so pretty and it's so unique and that is part of this design my design in this very moment made by me and nobody will have the same little overlapping or the same characteristic and maybe you have others of course but different right I like to proceed with tiny little brush strokes so then I will get some texture when you feel the brush is getting too dry though dip it gently in the water we love it I know maybe some of us is hating this moment because you know it's definitely what it takes the longest but it's all part of the journey friends like as I always say art is like a life lesson right in life there are so many tedious things and details that we don't really like but we still have to take care and we do it 
we complete our tasks and then we feel better. It's part of life. In school, when my students, you know, start, I feel first a sign of giving up or frustrations. I always recall, take a moment, refresh, stretch your hands. You don't have to finish it right now. And I encourage you to do the same. Uh, you can take your time, but you're going to finish that. And remember that it's also, it's like in life, right? You have a, something to do, something to face. In this something, in this process, you will have things and aspects that you like the most and they will come easier to you and things and aspects instead that they won't come easy to you and you don't like them. But still, they are part of the whole process, the same process, right? So you don't quit. You organize your actions and thoughts and you act. You take your breaks. You're kind to yourself but you also have high expectations. And the high expectations is that you finish that project doing your best, giving it your best, and learning. And treasuring what you learn. Now that the background is over, I'm gonna go on top of a few of the less saturated area. Just wanna make sure that it's nice. Uh, cohesive. I love to see this brush stroke. Doesn't it look pretty? It looks so pretty because it's natural, right? So it shows like the brush strokes so the different intensity of the same color very nice very very nice now we're gonna let it dry completely and we are going to prep our extra fine black marker so we can do all the outlines and few more design that, that we might want to add on top but not too much because it's a pretty big pretty busy design already to see if our design is completely dry you just have to gently tap, tap your hands on top of it and your hand should be clean and dry. Then we can proceed with an extra fine Sharpie. If you have another brand, a more professional brand of extra fine a permanent marker, as long as it's a permanent marker, you can use it. I personally, when I have to prep some commissions of uh, artwork for sale, I use the Micron, the Japanese extra fine markers, and I love them. They are definitely like a very uh, professional and they perform extremely well however for my practice uh, I use a very like pretty basic and scholastic uh, materials just because art supplies uh, cost a lot of money and their prices is going up and up and as you can imagine um, I use a lot of our supplies uh, to you know record all of the video and the shorts that I prepare for YouTube so they go by pretty quickly in my house and uh, I really cannot and don't want to spend the fortunes. I also want to tell you, like, and want to show you that even with scholastic uh, or more basic art supplies, you will still able to understand and learn about a technique. You will still able to have a mindful and fulfilling experience, and you can also create beautiful, beautiful artwork that don't have anything to buy from more professional artworks, you know? I see it all the time in school. We use scholastic materials, of course, the best quality that I can afford, but still it's a scholastic materials and my students create really outstanding artworks that would easily belong to any art galleries. Then, you know, I always say invest first in your own resources and then you can invest in more professional art work, art supplies and materials if you decided to increase and improve your practice. So we are basically going over the lines that we trace first with a pencil.
and then at the end we are gonna decide if we want to add some patterns with the black to support and enhance the pattern that we already created with colors and the design that we created at the beginning now these design are pretty busy so i would not add too much i don't want to really take the attention of the viewer or of our eyes out of this beautiful colorful design that is already going on on the paper but once again you need to respect your own personality and your own artistic style so you know better right you do what you want and you feel that is the right things for your design i will do and provide some suggestions And then you will make your decision accordingly. Also in doubling sometimes the outline as I did it here, I did it there, you can also fix some tiny little uh, imperfections that you want to fix, if any of course. Now off we go to these leaves slash drops. The act of outlining something, it's so meditative because you need to be so focused and follow your hand and the movement of the marker on the paper, no distractions at all. You don't have to really think that much because everything is already designed, you just have to follow it. So it's really calming. Now that we completed the outline, if you want to do a few more design on top, I think that I'll probably just add the one line and a dot line and a dot something nice and gentle that won't cover the beautiful color and the beautiful texture that we created with watercolors so we want the pattern to support the design right and not to uh, overwhelm the design and the eyes probably i would do some kind of nice little petals And I would do the same design for these leaves. A line and a dot, line and a dot, line and a dot that we use already for other Talaveras inspired design. Maybe for this one, since they are green, I can do a line in the middle and then some segmented diagonal lines both sides to recall the motif of a real leaf.
if you want to add something more something different remember respect your artistic personality and don't be afraid to make your own choices remember that these are just practice and even if something doesn't go according to your plan or have you or as you envision it it is still something beautiful and it's still worth it and you will still feel extremely good afterwards And I think that I will leave everything else as it is because I don't want to overdo it. So we did the outlines, we added some more details and everything else is done. I'm going to switch the camera so we can say goodbye. Okay, friends, we did it as we always do. And this is the beautiful design inspired by Mexican traditional tiles, the Talaveras Mexicanas. And this was our first practice and design. This was our second. This was our third. And today we finish with our fourth. So I really hope that you enjoyed this unit dedicated to Mexican art and design. I really did. And remember that my, video are, my videos are meant to be a support for your creative uh, process and creativity so hopefully these videos boost your creativity and you can actually combine these four design into new designs or you can recreate the ones that you like the most or you can recreate the four of design on a bigger surface and really make and turn those into an artwork so feel free to really stretch and twist and change the practice as much as you want and as you feel. The, what is important about my tutorial that I really, I try my best to make them friendly to everybody, regardless your artistic background and your skill level. So they are beginner, intermediate and advanced friendly because you can really build up on those practices. Remember to subscribe, share uh, my videos, like them, send me a comment or a feedback. I always love when you write to me and consider if you want to become a member or donations or whatever you want to like do to support this channel. And please uh, ask me to join the Art with Miss B Facebook group so we can actually share pictures of what we created. And if you don't want to share yours, you will still be delighted by pictures of others and see how beautiful is the community that we are building together. I wish you all a very, very good day and a wonderful life. And I see you all very soon. Ciao a tutti.